All right, fellas, we're going. Yes, sir. Where's my phone at, actually? All right, Andrew, welcome to yeah, the High Button Podcast. I mean, glad I got the, uh, the official nod here. Hey, Andrew, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, I did I call you Andrew? Andrew? Threw him right off right yeah. off the get-go. Yeah, I was like, who's Andrew? <laughs> Sorry, wig, my yeah, bad. That's better. What's going you. on? Not much, man. How are you? Can't complain. Three best months of the year, June, July, August. Summer's yeah. here. Yeah. I was out at your uh, neck of the woods uh, yeah, I saw last you weekend. Yeah, that's hilarious. The, one of the, I, they saw you before I did. <laughs> Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you in like years, and then they, you're out in oh, my yeah. backyard drinking beards with my old man, and I'm like, what? <laughs> well, <laughs> same name. Yeah, well, that's I what mean, I was trying to figure out if I met your dad back in the Max days. He probably did it at some point. But you don't yeah, remember I mean, back then, man. Like, you're only thinking I'm the show, and our team is right. sick, or whatever, I you know? Mean, yeah, I guess so. Not me. I guess so, a little bit. Whatever. That's, <laughs> that's not the point. No. No. Anyway, so what's up, man? Like you're, uh, you took a different route in hockey than a lot of people did in, in the maritime, uh, yeah. in the maritime provinces. Um, honestly, a little bit jealous the route you went. You got a lot mm. more uh, experience in, in a higher level of hockey, not going the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League route, <laughs> going the NCAA route. Um, let's just jump into it. Talk, let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was just kind of more of a, a lucky accident more than anything. I. Uh like most of us probably where we were kind of on undereducated on the NCAA opportunities. Right. So yeah. I didn't even really know what NCAA was or like it was an opportunity until my final year of junior when these, you know, packages from different schools started to, you know, come in and stuff. So, I mean, I, uh, I didn't even really know much about the school I went to. I just kind of oh, really? heard through the grapevine through a couple of guys, Jared Hicks and stuff had been there for a visit and he said that it's a, a really good time and the, the rink was awesome and the, the, the program was really good. So I kind of just took a leap and went down there on a whim and it was kind of the best thing that ever happened to me, really. That's the biggest thing is taking that leap. You know what I mean? Whether you're educated on it or not, if you get the opportunity and you think that's something that's good for you, take the fucking leap. Yeah, yeah I mean, I was kind of ready to just don't. shut her down and become an electrician. I was like applying for NSCC and stuff. Like, <laughs> I kind of thought like, you know, AUS or nothing, right? You, if you play, didn't play for SMU or Dow yeah. or X or something, you know, you went to NSCC and got into trade and, you know, went on with your life. But mm. my final year, I kind of just, you know, said, fuck it, I'll go for it. And yes. you know, it, it was awesome. You got to so jump. And let me tell you. That school was amazing. Yeah. Oh, you went? To I it? went three different years, man. Oh, man. That's how good that school was. That place, shout out to Plymouth State. It's one of the best places in the world, honestly. It's heaven on earth, little heaven on earth. So back when you played for the Max, did you know you wanted to go this route? Or were you thinking maybe I will make the major junior jump? You know, obviously I was thinking major junior, you know. Really? Okay. I, I was kind of a late bloomer, I guess you could say. Like Me I too. didn't I didn't play major midget. I was an affiliate my second year. I didn't fully play until my third year major midget, so I wasn't really on a whole lot of Q teams radars probably yeah. even. So that was kind of a blessing in disguise as well cuz I didn't, you know, get get to go to a camp and ruin my my eligibility. So you know, again, it was kind of a just all oh, luck, really, that it kind of worked out that way, and I kind of went on to have a decent junior junior career, and it, you know, got, yeah. got noticed that way. So. It's almost a hidden message in there that you, you said you're a late bloomer, when I know because I played the three years of major midget, and I watched you try out, and I think you too, and you guys just didn't make it. I just remember one year I hated you, but then after that, I agreed <laughs> that you should have made it. Yeah, but I hated you too, so. <laughs> <laughs> But then, like, you know, you don't make it and you don't make it. And then finally, you're like, you know what? I'm going to go one more year. And then all of a sudden, there you go. Your road's paved for you. Whereas, like, I went three years and didn't even get anywhere near that. Right? So, yeah, just don't I, give up. I guess yeah. I, I kind of grew late, too. Right? I was tiny mm -hmm. until even my second year midget, I was still growing. Like, my first year midget, when I tried out for the Subways, was the only team I tried out for. I was only five foot four. Probably, like, 100 <laughs> pounds wet. Yeah, I was tiny man I was you don't remember wig as a tiny little kid uh, and no. then like probably when i was 16 maybe even closer to 17 i kind of shot up from five five to where i am now so i kind of had like a late growth spurt going into my final year of midget even so it was uh again it was just kind of a late bloomer i guess I was 5'4", my first year midget. Going back to you guys hating each other, I want to talk about the practices that we had and you two just going at it. The thing is, you we liked each other then. That was when we were best <laughs> friends. Yeah, we were brothers <laughs> at that point. That yeah. was just you guys set the tone for practice. Yeah, like, yeah, we, like yeah we, were, we battled for sure. 
Well, if you send, like, that is a good message to send. Like, if we're that close and everybody knows we're that close, we spend every day together, every night or whatever, and then we're battling out there like that in, in practice, I was like, what do you think we're going to do in a game? If I'm going to beat the shit out of him, he's going to beat the shit out of me in practice, what do you think we're going to do to the other team? Yeah. Right? So everyone else is like, oh, shit. I mean, you think we're kind of <laughs> nuts or whatever, but. Yeah. I feel like our team that year was kind of all like that. We all kind of pushed each other to be better. Oh, like, time. I feel like I was mm. always jealous of your guys' line when you were scoring, Same. and you were jealous of us when we were scoring, yeah. and like, it kind of made us better in the long run because we were just pushing each other to be better. We didn't, when we were off the ice, we were best of friends. Mm -hmm. Like we spent every minute together, of course. Right. But that helps. I think Kirk know. liked that. He liked the battle. He did. Lines. Absolutely. Cause, Cause most coaches, they'll be like, all right, boys, we're switching the lines up, but he, he stuck he with the lines the for way, a yeah. long time. And sure. How much closer you're going to be. If you're just going to, you're going to do that with the guy beside you. Like, you, you know, that when push comes to shove, he's going to stand up in front of the other guy. If he just did it to you in practice, you know what I mean? It just builds the team closer. Oh, yeah. but I was going to say it started from him. Like, he, we had to have intense practices. That's what oh, he expected sure. out of you. Yeah. If you want to move on to the next level or we want to win, this is what we have to do. Yeah. Well, what a great coach. What a great oh, uh, a guy to lead that group. He <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. Probably one of the best coaches or not probably the best coach I ever had, yeah. for sure. He got the best out of his players, and he was just an unreal guy, you know. I agree. Well, like, even though it wasn't, guy. Yeah, even though it wasn't professional hockey, it no, kind of we, felt like it was. Absolutely. It was our first little, my, at least my first experience of like yeah. extremely organized hockey, For you know, sure. smashing helmets, things like that. I don't mm -hmm. know. That was a big deal to me back then. Still yeah. is. He treated you like, <laughs> but, he treated you like men, right? Yeah, and then if absolutely. you acted like children, then he treated you like children. But for the most part, if you want to be treated like a man, then that's how you act. And I think that's our team that year was definitely no, pushing that sure. anyways. He was, uh, yeah. Yeah, he was an unbelievable coach. Where sure. did he play again? Detroit? Yeah, it was Kalamazoo. He got in Detroit and, you know, bashed a few heads around. I remember he fought Tony Twist and shit. So. I think he was the most no, in NHL. Yeah, guy, and uh, who else? Was it Probert? Yeah, he fought Probes. Yeah. yeah. What a psycho. Get the fuck. I didn't know that. I've never seen a guy tape a stick fast. Do you remember that shit? He's actually a member of the course who, that I work at now, the golf course. Oh, yeah? It's just hilarious. I see him around every once in a while. Have you ever talked to him? Yeah, quite yeah. a bit, actually. Every time he's in, I have a little... Is he still coaching? Uh, he's coaching like the female Atlantic team now or something. He oh, moved okay. on. So he's doing female stuff, but yeah, he's doing really well. I know okay. he was like, he did really well in the TAS organization and doing some minor hockey Still stuff. Still doing there. it. I don't know if he is anymore. I think he kind of stepped well, away. Well, his name's there. Yeah. Last time <laughs> I talked to him just a couple of weeks ago, he said he was kind of stepping away from the minor hockey. Don't, I mean, I don't want to yeah. put words in anybody's mouth, but he, uh, I think he's going to do the, the female Atlantic hockey stuff now. So. Yeah, that's true too. I remember he was big on that. He did a great job at running those camps in the summer. Yeah. I remember before the first Max camp, my third, my only year I played, but <laughs> before that, he had a great camp and that's what uh, really introduced me to him. Like he was like, if you want to come try out, you'll have a good shot at making it, but that's not the, the, the point. It was mm. just a great camp. The whole TASA organization showed up. He's just good at organizing that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he's really good. He understands the game and he knows what it takes to... Credentials you know, too, right? Like, right? Yeah. He keeps it simple too. Like I did a couple uh, tryouts with him this fall, just running some uh, tryouts and stuff for their minor hockey. Here you go. And he, uh, he just keeps it really simple. Like it's all very yeah. basic and he keeps it very fundamental. It's all about skill development. So it's, cool. you know, it's really good. <laughs> Well, I want to talk about Plymouth, like the school uh, outside yeah. of hockey. Like, sure. what, what's the what is there to do like outside? Of, uh, like, <laughs> oh let's just talk God, about that please. a little bit. Give me, give the listeners a little insight. To, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an awesome place for people that want to play hockey and still have fun at the same time. Let's just that's let's the start with that. It's it's an amazing place. There's lots of partying and stuff that goes on there. Oh yeah, on the weekends. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit weekdays. of a zoo bit of during the weekdays and the weekends yeah it's not hard to find somebody to drink with that's for sure absolutely no and you went up three not. years in a row absolutely man yeah, I, one time i flew up and he met me in boston and we ripped around boston for a bit and then one time i i drove up i guess that was the time i got stopped at the border and searched and all that shit anyways <laughs> then the other time remember i think when i flew up we drove home together yeah and and then I went up another time I came. Oh, with the boys, with Alds, Billy, myself, and Wig. We all went up back to the school. How far is it outside of Boston? It's like uh, an hour and a half. Yeah. That's not bad at no, all. It's not Interstate bad. 93. We didn't really go down there that often, though, because there was just so much going on. Like, there was always stuff going on, parties going on on the weekends. Plymouth house parties. is just like a town, man. Yeah, like it's a tiny. square. It's kind of like Kenful. Like, it's a small town, like Acadia, kind of similar looking. So, like, that's kind of what you wanted to see. You can though. walk across the entire campus from one end to the other in 10 minutes. Like, and everybody is, in, you know, 4,000 people are within that and, radius, you know. And didn't the school, like, all the students end up just, like, pushing the locals out of the houses and stuff, too? Like, well, it's basically, more of a, it's been there for a long time. Like, yeah. It was established, like, 100 years ago or something right. crazy. So, 
Yeah, I mean, originally the the Plymouth people lived there. The, the Plymouth people, <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, the townies. Like they call, they literally call them townies, which yeah. is horrible. But they uh, they kind of got pushed out of their housing just because the the school grew and they needed more housing for you know students. So how many students are there? I think there's. 4,000 undergrads and 2,000 grad students, so 6,000 people in that tiny little Jesus. small. Jesus. I mean, some people commute, probably a quarter of them, so. And you're an absolute less. stud on the hockey team, I heard, so do you ever Maybe. get, like, recognized yeah, around campus or anything like that? I mean, yeah, it's crazy. That's what I was going to talk to you guys about. Like, that was the cool part for the crowd is, like, you actually get to see the people that you go to class with and you see around campus. It's different than when you play for a, yeah. a team, like, in a city or something. True. You don't, it's, like, local people that you don't necessarily see all the time. But yeah. it's your friends that you see at the games, and it's kind of a different uh, atmosphere when you see them <laughs> around uh, the campus, is. like you could say. <laughs> yeah, it's sweet. I I just thought of something hilarious when you asked if people recognize him when the, the first time I went down or no, I think it was after your first year or the second time I went down, I was single at this point. I'll just throw that out there now for the story, <laughs> but I was on Tinder and my bio was just, uh, Andrew Wiggs brother. <laughs> so I, I don't think it ended up working out for me, but no. it was just funny. That just hit me now. That was the best part about playing high school hockey. You just know yeah, everyone. Exactly. Yeah, just cool going back to the friends. school. And like afterwards, if you guys got a big win or whatever, you go have some beers with the same people that were in the crowd. And, yeah. you know, they're all fired up. And they. it's kind of weird because like we're, we, we were the big team on campus, right? So like the football team wasn't that good. The baseball team wasn't good. So we were the only team that like really had success. And we did do pretty well. Like we had some national success and stuff. So we were followed pretty Jesus. closely by like the, the people in the school. So it was pretty... Uh, yeah, it was fun. Good time to be there for sure. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. And they're just getting better and better. They're just uh, are they? Well, the words out there now too, right? Like yeah. So now, like that's kind of how college hockey works. Like if you have a program that's successful and you have a good rank and you you're winning and stuff. Basically, winning is the biggest thing because then you have a chance to go to. It's just like fo NCAA football. If you follow that, you have yeah. to win to get into the you know the final games and stuff or get a sniff from the yeah. from the board. So. The more you win, the better program you have, the more the better swag you have, really, the, the more people want to come. So, cool. yeah, And then it's so people it's coming to you instead of you going to them, right? Well, exactly. People, instead of my coach going to recruit all the time, it's people saying, hey, I want to come to you guys, you know. Yeah. This program looks sick. So how did the recruiting happen for you? It was just like word of mouth? Well, like I said, I, I kind of found out through the grapevine about this place. Like, I got a call from Craig, the coach there, and he said, you know, we're looking at you. I'd never heard of this place my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> and I talked to Hixie. I was like, Hey, do you, have you ever heard of this place? He's like, man, I went down there last summer. It's a riot. Like you need to check this place out. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Like, like I said, it was just like a spur of the moment decision. I was like, fuck it. I'm applying for student loans. I'm going for it. Like I remember that it. process. So yeah. That so was, how was your recruitment trip? Or did you, or I didn't go on a recruitment trip. My recruitment trip was me showing up with all my shit. <laughs> <laughs> here I am. Plymouth, here I am. boys. <laughs> <laughs> So were you nervous at all first week going yeah. in? Like, yeah, I was terrified. Did you um, fit into the group really well? Like, what was the transition? Yeah, like? everybody was like same thing. Like all the beauties you'd meet in junior was just yeah. like transition right into it. Everybody wanted to have fun, and you know, was on the same page when mm -hmm. it was business time. Everything was all serious, but when we were away from the rink, it was a good time. Everybody was pretty loose. They treated me like well, as a teammate, like literally. Yeah, it was like crazy. I was on the team. I never even stepped. Actually, I went in the rink once, but like it was almost like a brotherhood. It was weird. It was kind of fraternity. -ish it's a rare a thing. Well, because yeah. great thing, but and rare. they lived in a house. If and eight it was guys, <laughs> mostly the hockey team, right? Like or all of them. It was all a all a hockey guys. So that's beneficial in many ways, right? But also kind of not so beneficial kind of on the other ends of well. things. Yeah, and I like mean, when it got stuff. time to do some homework, it got tough at times. But yeah, I can believe that. You ever go down to Buff State and see Brody? I you didn't. He wasn't there. He kind of started as I finished. I uh, wish I would have. Okay. I've kind of shout out to Brody. I've kind of lost touch with him. I hope he's listening. I miss yeah. the guy. He's a beauty. Me too. I haven't really heard from him in a long time, but he'll be listening. I think yeah. he listens. Yeah. I uh, I seen him one day. I was driving rig, but he's doing unreal. Eh? He's just won the academic of the year. Yeah, man, he, he, he had a great career down in yeah. Buff State. Yeah. Almost another guy did down there too, didn't he? He's What's like, that? Didn't he find a girl down there? Yeah, he like did. Yeah, innocent. she actually came here about two months ago. We met her. Oh, great girl. Awesome. Yeah, good for him. He had nothing yeah. but great things to say about Buff State. Did you ever I play imagine. down there, though? I, ever... We never played Buff State. They were in no? a different conference. So you only get, like, six or seven out-of-conference games each year, kind of, like, you know, to gauge where everybody's at, like, throughout okay. the nation. Yeah. But uh, we never got to play Buff so State. So what was your conference? Because I, I know, the, like, the term for it, but, the like... The MassCAC. The, yeah. I think it was the Massachusetts State 
conference athletic or collegiate athletic conference. Yeah, see, like Something I just like call it the mass CAC. The mass CAC, yeah, that's what we call the CAC. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny then. Yeah. What are some of like really cool schools that you went to go see? Like cool campuses, good uh, fan base. Uh, and how far did you travel? Like, what? Give me some road trips here. The farthest we went, we went to a place called I think it was Plattsburgh. It was in New York. That was pretty cool. Sounds familiar. Yeah, it's a really sick school. They we went to a, like a Christmas tournament there, but that wasn't what I was going to say. Uh, the coolest uh, fan base we ever played in was called Norwich. I don't know if you no. Norwich Academy. They're a D three school from Vermont, and it's an army school. So when we played there, they have a sick barn. Like it's yeah. like top of the line, and it probably seats like I don't know, probably five thousand. Yeah. But Three thirty five hundred of them were all in their army suits, like in their army uniforms. So it was like, and every time they scored, they would do stand up and do this like crazy, like salute thing, like crazy <laughs> crowd cheer salute, like all five thousand of them. It was so intimidating. We got smoked like ten to one. They were like the number one team in the country. We got absolutely roasted. Is that your first year? Uh, it was my first year. I actually scored the only goal though, which was pretty. <laughs> there you go. No what, did deal. you do anything back to them? I know What's you're pretty that? greasy like that sometimes. Uh, no, I didn't. It was shorty. We were already down like six, six shorty, or man. something. So I ever just, score. Yeah. Did you ever take, do you ever go to like any football games down in the States? That's obviously one of the better parts. No, of there wasn't down. really anything around for us. I mean, the biggest school would have been UNH. Yeah. But they, I don't even know if their football program is that big, but our school sucks so bad. They hadn't won a game in like 40 years. When <laughs> I'm not even kidding. 40 years. <laughs> you could have played on the team. It sounds like. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. <laughs> Kicker though. That no, sounds. I don't think actually. Yeah. They were some big boys, but they weren't too quick or, you know, talented, I don't think. Well, it doesn't matter if you're small if you don't get hit. That's true, I guess, but I had no time for that. They were no. they practiced way more than us. They were, like, hardcore, man. They were there, like, three weeks before the school year started, and, like, even when it wasn't their season, they were in the gym at, like, 6 in the morning and stuff. Like, that wasn't for me. That's terrible. 6 in the morning yeah. practice? No, they were doing, like, deadlifts and squats and stuff in the they gym. They love that, that shit, though. Yeah, I so, but... I don't know. I, I won't even eat at six in the morning. I'm definitely going to And if you're out. not going to go to those things at a university level, I don't think they let you play. So, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah, that's so. true. I'm not going to go to that. <laughs> yeah, were, they strict, no, no. were they strict down there with the hockey team? Yeah, I mean, it, was, it wasn't strict, but it was like, you know, you had to be a, a kind of a professional. You know, you, when yeah. you were out in town, you couldn't yeah. be a you know, dickhead or else you would feel some repercussions, you know, like Plus people getting known. arrested and stuff at parties and people know. got arrested at parties. Yeah. Quite frequently, probably a couple of times a year. Quite right? frickingly, <laughs> quite frequently. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of a, I don't I'll know. think about what was that thing we did that time? The keg race, I think. Do you yeah, remember that? The, yeah, the keg race. So you literally get three kegs. You get a team of like 15 or 16, <laughs> 17 people and never finish it. The, I remember they, the were, if they were screaming in for the, Canadians. We were just throwing it around in the front yard. Like it was just a front yard party with three kegs. Yeah. Like Cautious dry bars. Super yeah, it's heavy. Candyland down there. It's a whole different world. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's would, fun. We're just living in the states in general. It's a whole different world. I find no. Yeah, I, I guess. Mean, li- yeah, I guess absolutely. I, it's I a completely, completely different culture down there, man. It's it's so different than here. You ever bring up politics down there? I tried to stay away from yeah. it because when I was down there, it was like <laughs> Trump was like kind of getting into his thing, and it was like, yeah, if you ever even mentioned a bad thing about, because I was, I don't know, I don't know how anyone else feels about Trump. But I was like, are you serious? Like this guy's going to be the president? Like what a yeah. joke! And they were like, <laughs> some people got so offended, and like, oh man, I just have to like walk away. I'm like, oh man, see, I'd been no do? good. People just bring it up. People love to talk about politics. Oh, I know. He there. actually came to our school. Trump, Trump came, did? Trump came. I didn't go see him, but there was like... Why was he at yours? What was he doing? Just doing his politician thing, like coming around, <laughs> shaking hands, kissing babies. I wish I, I, <laughs> I, wish I could have seen yeah. that. Yeah, it was crazy. I didn't see it because like it was a fucking nightmare trying to get into the place that he was in. It was like a small venue, so there was a ton of people there, but yeah, it was... Uh, it's crazy, man. Was this before he was elected? So he was like, it was before, Trump, yeah. Doing this his was, rounds. This was before Trump. So this would have been like 2015. When did he get 2016? Was he did he get in? I don't know. Or 2017. It was last year. No 2017. Terrible. 17. I don't even know. I, haven't, I couldn't even tell you. I'm just making Either. things up. But yeah, I think it was 2015 <laughs> when this would have been. So he would have been pre pre president. Yeah, for but, sure. Yeah. I remember being. I don't know where I was. I was. Yeah, I was in L. A. Like four months ago. And as soon as you mentioned that you're a Canadian to someone, they just want to know what your political views are about yeah, America. They just yeah. they're so concerned about it. Yeah, they just want to talk about it for sure. Fuck uh, I mean, yeah. Some people are like a lot of people that I played with are like. I lived in Boston. They're kind of a stubborn people yeah. in general. So they, uh, they're very like opinionated. So if you don't think the way they think, then you know, you just, you're wrong basically. In you Boston? Know, there's no like, you know, in between at all. I love y'all boys, but you guys are stubborn. 
What's that? <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> if you're listening. Was there any other okay. Maritimers that you played with? Yeah. A um, couple. I played, My first year, I played with uh, Kyle Ross and Phil Moore. Oh, yeah. Um, they were there for my first year. And then Colby Lansleeve yeah. from Tro was there uh, my final year. He was a beauty. We were line mates, actually, for quite a while. That's great. Yeah, he's a great hockey player. He was over in Europe for quite a, quite a bit. But I think he's coming back home now. Did... Um is there any more do you know playing in there like i feel like yeah the more i, think that go, the more oh, I, know I was there. talking to my coach because our the team i'm coaching is trying to organize like a visit to plymouth to go kind of expose them to some of the, the cool. opportunities but Ooh. uh i was talking to my coach and he said he's got a few guys that he's eyeing up from yarmouth because he's still close with lb there that's true and uh he said he's you know trying to convince as many guys from there to come down as he can he loves the maritime guys so you said yarmouth and, and i'll go back just a couple steps do you think that the opportunity would have come to use in bridgewater or do you think that yarmouth was a, a, like obviously they're more known because they're older but i always wondered that myself you know what i loved my time in bridgewater me too it was amazing like they basically took me into the league and gave me an opportunity to do what I did. So I have nothing but love for them. But mm-hmm. to answer your question, I don't know if I would have because the only thing I, I think got me the opportunity was we kind of had a good run that year, right? right. We, we went far in the playoffs and my, the coach that in Plymouth did not even see me play until we were playing Woodstock in the final round. So it's like if we wouldn't have gone to that round, then I would have never been there or something you know so it's it's different and I th- that's a good point too that you say he 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 probably planned that and you know i mean like they want to see winners they want to see how you do in adversity and tough games well, and absolutely like, and, and i mean he's probably not even heard of the mhl or this you know he probably just watches the finals to see you know who true. the best players are or word sense. of mouth you know and again plymouth's not a huge market either so there's not a lot of people that are like jump you know chomping at the bit to go there either so it's not like he, uh, yeah. you know, was out here scouting people. Like, yeah, he was on a huge you know. trip. He just happened yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. He just happened to, like, turn <laughs> into a game and see me play, and I might have had a good game or whatever. So it was, again, just kind of lucky that it all That's life, man. fell into place. Yeah, it's all just opportunities. Yeah. Right? So how, how many, I don't think I've ever asked you this either, how many schools did you get offers from? Do you, do you remember? <sighs> I don't know. There was maybe five or six seven okay cool she so had some options all, all d3 schools yeah yeah but a, still d1 opportunity but i wonder if they're all that same game it. a lot of the guys that play d1 are on it from the time they're 15 you know they're talking to coaches they're emailing okay. school saying you know i'm interested and you kind of have to in that market kind of have to promote yourself definitely there's so many good players out there so if you're not promoting yourself and you don't get seen then it's, you know it's your loss so i kind of was one of those guys that again i was uneducated but at the same time i never really loved like to toot my own horn so i never really wanted even, to put yourself up i didn't there. want to like promote myself and be like hey you know i'm, I'm a good player like here's my resume mm-hmm. and yeah like, let me come try out or whatever i was never like that kind of person so you let your game speak for yourself and yeah i tried to be that guy and maybe it hindered me a little bit and maybe it didn't i don't know i feel like i could probably hack it at the i D1 think it comes from up it, top man i know your dad and i think that's kind of what he would kind of implement into your yeah, game because my old man you know, was the same right like humble person you're only as good as your last game you used to say and if your last game you're terrible in this game you have to be awesome to be good right. <laughs> that's one thing i'm always grateful for is that at least i think all our all of our parents they weren't crazy hockey parents nope. they mm-hmm. let our game speak for themselves they Absolutely. weren't uh, yeah thank up god there. i didn't have oh, a crazy hockey i always oh, thank my miserable. parents for that yeah thank, like I mean, the mom up the moms up there they're screaming things like score or like yeah. get it like yeah Literally, you just screamed in three words the entire object of the game. Yeah. We get it. Yeah. What's worse for me is when I hear horror stories of, like, kids getting roasted on the way home after games, like, you know, getting reamed out by their parents. Like, man, how could that have ever been fun? Like, my dad was, like, he was decent at hockey and stuff, and he would always, like, point things out that I could have done better. Like, you know, you you could have made this decision instead of this one, like, or things like that. But he was never, like, what were you thinking? Like, you're an idiot. So he was never... always trying to help. Right. He was always constructive criticism. Like, how miserable do you have to be to fucking ream your kid, your young kid out, like in your own right, personal exactly. life, because that's and what it, it is. Happens, like it still happens. I, I see know. It coaching, it's crazy. It's your own personal life that's affecting what you're doing. Right. To your, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't understand. Or Obviously they just people feel like they on, have, but. you know, their kids the next Crosby or whatever, and they think, I don't know, I don't know whatever the motivation is, but the way I, I look at those kids, whatever it is, the way I always looked at it is like parents invest so much time 
and these money. kids time and money so that's probably the big thing it's, money, right? it's, it's they think of themselves on the ice because yeah. they're they're doing every their, their entire life life evolves around their kid playing hockey true and so I, that's like i understand that you too. shouldn't be yelling at your kid and things like that but there's also another side where i kind of get it I don't know. I get it's, why it's, they it's a, yell. Like I get being pissed off and frustrated and putting time and effort into things and not getting the results you want. But at the yeah. same time, like there's ways to go about it. Like your dad could have easily reamed you out, but instead he took the the man route yeah. and yeah. and put it into terms that you can understand that you weren't just going to go la la la. You right, know what I mean? Exactly. And I mean, then all of a sudden did, now you're thinking he did ream me out at points, but it was yeah. always for me doing like dumb things, like being a bad person, like. I remember this one time I'll never forget it I speared a kid it was like Pee Wee AAA and I speared him and hurt him and I got kicked out of the game and my dad was ripping like oh. he was so mad at me like he like literally I think we had to drive like a half hour home and he just grinded my gears the whole way home like ripping into me telling me I'm never gonna play hockey again like if I play like that like what an asshole I was like it was terrible like I'll never forget that but a good lesson like yeah I absolutely never, you know, especially because you, you never forgot like it to that. this day yeah, for sure I remember times like let's say we were playing a tournament in peewee and we're done on Sunday and the game's done at five and some parents would drive back and some would stay at the hotel and I remember my dad always wanting to drive back and I'd be mm -hmm. pissed because I mm -hmm. want to stay at the hotel some nights and thinking back on it and just like Justin you're a fucking brat just like making your dad stay another night in PEI thinking right. back yeah. on it now when really we could have just drove back right. Right. But those bucks. are the best times ever though yeah. like those yeah. are the memories you look back on like yeah. playing mini sticks in the hallways and you know being with the boys but yeah being with the boys before it was ever considered being with the boys yeah. Yeah. you yeah. just you know didn't I mean. understand and that was just like your playground right you know? exactly that's where you're your happiest right when you're just ripping around in a hotel you know playing Honestly, sticks i wish Love there were still tournaments in like the midget level you said you played in a tournament with plymouth right yeah we went to a couple like christmas they weren't really tournaments you literally played one game against like another there was four teams and you yeah. played like a semi-final and a final and whoever won the final was the winner but yeah, that's a tournament you just, it was like a showcase tournament basically for teams you yeah. know scouts or whatever you know a lot of east east coast team like when we when we went to the monktonian when we played for the max that was one of the best times ever just a great tournament we're all older oh, i, I amazing. enjoyed that stuff. yeah that was that was amazing yeah. i got to go twice i went as Off my I affiliate should. which was pretty cool oh, and did I you? went as yeah again my second year or my third year which was yeah that was pretty much when i became friends with them was the monktonian i think he got put in my group or something i was pissed my last memory of uh <laughs> That trip is us getting kicked out against Bell Tire, though. And yes, sir. <laughs> I'll never forget what coach told us to do, and I've never been more on board for a game plan in my life. Forget yeah. the puck and yeah. just fucking run guys over. I can't we remember did. what I did. I think I skated the length of the ice. Hit a guy from behind. Hit somebody that didn't even have from the behind. Puck. Yeah. <laughs> what tournament are you talking? about? I'll paint the picture for you, okay? Because I was on the ice myself, and it was one of the greatest shifts I've ever been a part of. No puck, just hit guys. Wig was like we were kind of like going back and forth. They were dumping it in our zone, and we were coming out, and we were getting caught, and they were dumping it back in our zone anyways there was a scrum behind the net and we just came out <laughs> and i looked over and like guys like fishing for the puck in the scrum and wig just probably just inside the red line straight to the goal line <laughs> cream the guy from behind boom huge fight ensued you don't remember what tournament are we talking about we'll yeah okay yeah, yeah in the gatineau arena yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I I think like five of us got kicked out and then kirky came in after him was like he didn't even get mad he was just like no. fucking right boys yeah yeah, yeah. he told us forget the like he's like, my dad to has the game either. sheet of all the penalty minutes so i it, yeah. we all got misconducts at one point there was like you I got like three games shazy yeah clarky uh brody Rude and one other person. There was like eight, nine, was in there too. nine of us in the penalty box at one point. Yeah. Remember they booed us when we came out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they booed the other team, I thought. No? I thought everyone wanted us I'm to I'm pretty win. sure Shazy was like flipping the bird to the crowd. That's yeah, what it was. Maybe, maybe that that's was. who they were booing. Yeah. Sounds about right. Isn't that yeah. crazy yeah. to think about that? Screaming at 15 year old kids. I remember Kirk just going, You're not allowed to come off until you hit someone. Yeah. Like, that's what he said. He's, that's what he said to you? Yeah, yeah. he's that's like, You can't right. come off till you hit someone. You hit someone. I don't care. I remember, I got their Didn't best player kicked out. Yeah. Too. Like, that just hit me. <laughs> What'd you say? Kirk was like, I don't care, man. Just because, like you guys said, just do whatever. And some guy he hit me and I they were dropped being... like I was dead. And he ended up getting their best player got suspended for the final. They were so raw. We got toasted in that game, too, didn't we? Like 7 2 or 8 2. Yeah, I think you scored our only goal in that game, too. What was the deal with Bell Tire? Why were they so much better? shit games. What's that? Why were they so much better belt tire were they older or something yeah. there was, they was were little, yeah i think we were like 15 16 17 and they were only 16 17 year olds 
and they just have so many people to they were from. nasty they were unreal the I think they starts right of, from the beginning right to yeah it's like an organization all the way through from yeah. minor hockey right through to major midget they produce a lot of nhl guys they do yeah. they have a lot of they have a lot of talent yeah. remember in the Wee tournament they were the team too remember? they win all kinds of stuff all over the north america they're a pretty big organization i think i don't know anymore but they were back then do you guys remember that game i forget his name but he was working the door for us and he was yelling get him get him every time he changed and he kept like you know when like the door the i don't remember that that's hilarious Clark, he just kept making fun of him on the bus. <laughs> get him, get him. He just going, keep going, get him, get him. That's I forget funny. his name. He was the owner, I'm pretty sure, of the Max at the time. Barry Potty? Yeah, that's who it was. Because no his son played for Gatineau, right? I don't know. That's funny. I think that was who it was. It's hilarious. And I remember Clark, he's that like, we're, we had to do homework. Like, no, we're not doing homework. We're going, go, we're going go-karting, boys. Remember, remember that? We're in the hotel. And I Kirk's like, all right, boys, we've got to go. I remember going go-kart. I don't remember the we're game. We're all there. sitting in the lobby. And yeah, he's talking about the homework now. Okay. Do you oh, I do that? remember the Cell homework. Cell phones were bro. just starting to get big where you yeah. could just start to text. Yeah, yeah so we I all went that. in the, lo- the lobby. We're there for like 20 minutes. No one's really doing <laughs> big homework. Big shit show. Nobody was doing anything. <laughs> They're all looking at like porn or something. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Clark, Clark he was. Porn. Yeah, Clark, and watching was that watching girl porn. on YouTube. Remember Clark? He loved that little girl <laughs> yeah. singing. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Riot that was. And then Clarky's dad comes in. And he's like, boys, no, we're going go-karting. I think picked up the tab for everyone too. Yeah, that was amazing. And those are just the memories that you love. Yeah. Oh man, tons of shit hits you when you bring something up like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cra- it's crazy though because the only year I really talk about is the year that my third year, which is your guys' only year, which means right. what's the point of even playing the other first two years? I should have just met up with you boys in third year and had the same because well, I'm sure those you are all the memories from the first year too. Or whatever. Yeah, but it's just like that's. I mean, we were good. We had good players. Like yeah, we can name off a bunch of players that moved on from that yeah, team. Yeah. Bootlier, Bullen, Campbell, you, me, Blanche. That's funny because a lot of us didn't get a shot till our third year. Like yourself, me, and yeah. Bullen. Yeah. None of us played until our third year. Uh, Kevin Hustis. And then we all went on to do. You know, you went to play for the Mooseheads, and Bullen went on to play at RMC and stuff. You so went like, to Plymouth. Yeah. So it's like you know, there's you <laughs> it was know, a great. Never give up, I guess, kids, one yeah. of the great. You, one of the yeah, honestly. Never give up. There's so many guys in the NHL that just never gave up that are still playing. Absolutely. They grind it out till they're like 26 and 27. That's another oh, yeah. reason why NCAA is a great opportunity because you don't you don't have to go until you're later, right? You don't have yeah. to, I didn't go until I was 21. I didn't finish until I was 25. Mm-hmm. So it gives you an opportunity to, you know, yeah. kind of grow into your body. And, you know, yeah. some people might not, you know, definitely, grow, you know, fulfill their... Guys like Gorman, they grow in great too. And then that's it, right? Well, so. that's it. But some people don't grow like yeah. myself until mm-hmm. later on in life and gives you a bigger opportunity to develop, so... I think that if I had to give your whole entire hockey career sum up in what would be three words, never give up, literally everything we've talked about, you you went from Cole Harbor to East Hans when East Hans wasn't that big of an organization. No, so that's that hard. automatically right there hinders you a bit. Then you never made midget major till your third year. You still went on to play junior A and fucking light it up. And then you went got out of Bridgewater, which was fun, obviously, because I was there too and it was. And you go to Yarmouth. Which was also fun. Right? So at the end of Bridgewater, <laughs> yeah, I remember because Nosy crazy. told the story about you guys potentially just like kind of getting sewered without getting traded, right? So you're just like, whatever, you stay with it. Then you go to Yarmouth and then you're like, okay, finally, you're thinking this could be the end of it. And then all of a sudden you're like, nope, I'm going to give it another go and go play again, right? So just yeah, never uh, give yeah. up. Yeah, absolutely. And then education kind of persuaded me a little bit too. You know, I, was, I kind of thought in the back of my mind, you know, if I go down there for four years and it sucks, I still get an education out of it, right? So mm. that was a big motivation for me and that's pretty big in today's, you know, world. You kind of have to have a degree or else you're, you know, no yeah. man's land. Not everybody thinks like that either, you know? Like, I know I definitely wouldn't have... It wouldn't have been like, oh, I'm going down there for education, you know? Right. No, I mean, I'm not even using my education to its, you know, you still have its full it. potential, but at least I have it in my... Yeah, so back what pocket. did you, did you, ma- you didn't major in anything or did you? Yeah, no. I was a finance and economics guy. Finance major, economics minor. And you had a, like a 3.78 GPA, if I'm not mistaken, something like that? Yeah, I did. I actually wasn't like the best student in high school or anything, but when it was like, you know, crunch time in university, you know the guys down there took it serious too like school mm-hmm. is a big deal in the states like people take school very seriously so um it was kind of nice to have that mentality going in that you know you kind of want to strive for greatness or else yeah. you're not going to get a job because down there the market is so competitive like if you don't have a 3.7 or above gpa you basically just get thrown off the pile right so it's Shh. kind of a shame but you if you don't grind through school then you have no chance of even getting a job down there so i had roommates and friends who took it all ser- took school seriously so i was able to you know you know use that motivation to do it myself and 
you know, turned out pretty well, I guess. And think- it was nice to have the, the team, you know, we all basically took classes together. And sure. That's nice. Like Mighty yeah. Ducks. Yeah, exactly. So there's always like three or four of the boys in every one of the classes that I had so we could, you know, yeah. bounce ideas off each other and help each other out if we were struggling. But cool. Do you think you'd have been mentally capable to go down there right out of high school? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> Looking back now, you know what I mean? No chance, man. Yeah. I was nowhere near mature enough to go down there. Absolutely. Like, I would have been a disaster if I went down there as an 18-year-old. Like, mm-hmm. there's, like, a majority of the kids that are there are 18 because they come right out of high school, like, non-athletes. Well, even most of the athletes come right out of high school, mostly just hockey players are the older ones because we play junior hockey, right? So, yeah. it's mostly 18-year-olds, and you can see when they get away from mom and dad, they let loose for a while, and it's like, yeah, there's a it's a zoo down there like I'm sure question. all universities are the same like frosh week and all that stuff like yeah. people that lose because it's crazy to see some kids that literally go away like even if you go to prep school at like 15 that's more of like a university based yeah, absolutely. style school and then you're thinking like I know for me right up until probably like yesterday I wouldn't have been able to go to school, you know, like mentally and yeah, I mean, it it is a grind and you have to be, you know, accountable to get your work done because there's nobody telling you Mm -hmm. to do so. If you don't do it, then you just out the 20 grand or whatever it costs you to go that year and you fail and nobody cares, right? Other than you. Kick off the team if you don't do good. Basically, yeah. So you have to have a certain GPA to even play on the team. So I think ours was 2.5, which is not that good but Mm -hmm. still some people couldn't handle it like there was probably at least one guy every year who wasn't allowed to play like the second half of the season because their gpa wasn't good enough or until they got their gpa back up or whatever yeah and that's like at the back of your head throughout the whole season yeah you're thinking of that yeah for sure like if i want to keep doing this and grinding with the boys and i got to get my my shit done i got to get my schoolwork done too you know it's part of the gig you're a student athlete yeah Uh, i remember when i read that because i'm I'm pretty sure i'm almost bang on with your gpa but when i was down there you were still in exams Mm -hmm. so i'm down there thinking you know this is this big shit show we're gonna do and then like even with me down there you were still like no dude like yeah i gotta do this you know yeah Yeah, not the whole time but like when you knew you had to buckle down you did and that was it and i was like wow like i would have never been able to do that yeah I was taking some pretty tough classes at that point. But, yeah, I mean, it, you really got to, you know, study. I mean, I've never really studied during high school. I was always a guy that just got 60s on everything, and I was happy. And I just, you know, whatever, I yeah. muddled through. Sullied. But, uh, <laughs> which kind of sucks in the long run because I would have got more scholarships and stuff when I was yeah. down at university. It would have saved me big bucks, so... You know, especially it looking back, awesome to take high school more seriously. But uh, I'm glad that I was able to do so in university, at least. Yeah, I find down in the states Bounce they back. take it a lot more serious when it comes. You said the job prospects down there. Oh well, there's one, you're like not the first person to tell me that. Million people, and then there's people from all over the world that want to go there too, right? So, yeah. like they actually say this in all kinds of classes. It's like such a global, you know, econo- like a world now that you don't have you don't have just competition from the states there's people coming from india and china yeah. and russia and yeah. germany and sweden and all these really great nations that have super smart people are trying to apply for these jobs as well so it's like you really have to be you know top of your field to even get considered nowadays down there it's crazy i don't know how people get yeah. jobs and that's why you hear so many people are jobless right yeah especially down there. i don't know what the i haven't really job prospected around here but i don't know what it's what it's like around here it's always a topic of conversation po- politics and education yeah absolutely i feel like it's a big business personally education mm-hmm. well the ncaa man look at the money they're making talking about being a business the money they're yeah, making a, off these athletes yeah oh, oh my crazy. god especially basketball yeah. this is like jersey and, much, and football oh. yeah that's crazy and hockey for sure. baseball it's, I, it's baseball a, it's such a sad because then they're promoting like this this job force where you have to be educated to do so so if, if you, you're kind of handcuffed if you don't yeah. Uh, get one of their degrees, this fancy piece of paper that costs you a hundred grand to, you yeah. know, enter the job force basically. <laughs> that sucks. And I if you're not one of the best students, is. you know, good luck. You know, it's a, it's a cruel world. It's a meat market down there, man. The States is crazy. It'll be interesting to see if that changes within the next like 10 years with the paying the players. Is that going to happen? What? Paying the players it's been a conversation for like the past I don't know decade like they've always talked about it nothing's ever come that to, would be uh, crazy you would see like huh. I feel like you would see so many shit shows like basketball players and football players like driving around Ferraris and on campus chains, crashing them and, and you know yeah. going to these crazy strip clubs and stuff like who knows man some fan like bases some movie shit yeah, yeah some fan bases they probably would if they yeah. imagine if you paid an 18 year old football player that just left mom and dad and you paid him 50 grand or whatever 25 grand even to you <laughs> yeah. know, here you go yeah. do whatever you want with it kind of thing like you ever see the documentary man. fab fab four fab five the no, michigan team basketball yes man so You've seen it? Well, yeah one? watch it it's super Yo, good. it's incredible yeah. essentially yeah. these Check guys were like trend makers and you know 
pulleys and shit. Really? Yeah. yeah. Do they huh. played for Michigan basketball. Uh, huh. Started wearing black socks. Then the whole country started wearing black socks. Hmm. Their jerseys were sold. Who was it? it was like Larry Bird and them or something? No, it was uh, like Jalen Rose, uh, Chris Weber, uh, a couple other guys. I don't know. How long ago was this? So early early 90s in their college careers so. yeah i didn't follow it either it's just it's just a fascinating See, that's what i'd, I'd yeah, just not follow and watch something cool like that later cool stories like that mm. you know, for sure anyways there was a cool story jalen rose was talking about there was a sports store and a subway right next to each other right. and in the sports store in the window his jersey was there for sale for like a hundred dollars but he didn't have enough money to go next door to the subway to buy a sub yeah so uh, the mentality imagine that like my jersey's there but i can't buy a sub yeah, wow exactly that's that's a crazy story i never yeah. thought about it that way i mean and i i can attest to that i was there was times when i was in university that i was the broke ass college student when i was eating mr noodles every meal for uh, two weeks straight because i didn't have enough money to do anything else right so i can't imagine seeing my jersey and somebody profiting off me i mean yeah we weren't a big level. market like that so we didn't have like you know my jersey for sale and the thing but i mean we sold our rink out every night i guess i mean the rink is deadly too, man. The dressing room was super, well, it's super nice. Every time we talk to someone who plays like somewhere's with a nice dressing room, they're stress. It's, I call it stress-free hockey. You don't have to worry about your shit being touched or moved or anything. You go in the dressing room, your shit's there. The tape's there if you need it. If your socks are ripped, you get new ones. If you don't like your tape job, you take your tape off and use it again. It's not like you have to fight somebody for it. Stress-free hockey. You go in, you have yeah. a nice rink. It's packed. You're going in there, super good mindset. No, we got treated like gold down there, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was fortunate. The what could have been the year before I got there, maybe two years. They just built like a brand new, like twenty million dollar oh, rink nice. on campus, like literally right on campus. <laughs> You're it was, pumped. It was mint. Like this place mm -hmm. is sick. Like it's not huge, but it's like everything's top of the line. Like our dressing room was sick. Like, yeah, it was really cool, really good experience, unbelievable program. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really, really good. Time. I didn't even go there, and I tell people to go there. Yeah, you know I mean? anytime so. anybody brings it up or mentions even NCAA, like, you know, when I, we, like I mentioned, I'm coaching now. So some parents come to us and say, you know, what do you feel about like, you know, NCAA versus Q and stuff like that. And I always, you know, advocate for NCAA unless the kid is like primed and ready to go. Like you had Drover on, like mm -hmm. he is, you know, he's a 15 year old, 16 year old stud. Like he's going to be yeah. ready and ready, ready to, to jump. Rip. So if you're ready to jump into that level at that time in that age, you know, you're good. You should probably do it. But yeah. I think if you're, you know, a little bit behind and you feel like you could develop more playing junior A or, you know, give yourself a few more years, even then the NCAA is definitely a, yeah. an unbelievable, you know, option for sure. Well, that's cool that you get to coach and kind of like you take your experiences it's, and you and you share them right like obviously you're not going to tell them about the party and stuff because they're not at that age well yet, no but like absolutely but i mean i try and tell them about d1 more than anything absolutely because you know, strive for the best exactly right the thing i like about ncaa route is that you don't have to jump into it right away like you do with the queue as soon as you're 16 you can right, play exactly and you're playing with 20 year old kids 20 year old not boys but like you know grown men essentially 20 right. years old like that's hard on your development i know one of the best things that ever happened to me playing hockey was playing high school hockey before playing major midget my confidence was boosted so much more jumping confidence into that first year with the max and i feel so yeah. many kids jump ahead a little bit Be mature yeah I you mean, know and it can it can ruin you and another thing is like late draft picks like you know guys that get drafted 10th 11th 12th they could be good hockey players you know good d3 you know yeah. guys or whatever they go to the camps for 48 hours and ruin their eligibility and they you know never get a sniff again so it's, yeah you know guys that are you know lower end draft picks i would you know kind of advocate for the ncaa side mm -hmm. but guys that you know one two three top draft picks yeah. you know and you got to play till you're 25. When you're junior, you're done at 20 until you do, some, you know, unless you, you go play pro. Unless you right? go play pro. Yeah, it's yeah. like you got to play till you're 25 and it's yeah. not even pro hockey. That's an exactly. incredible thing. And you got to be in another part of the world. And there's lots of like, I don't want to say equally as many, but I don't know, quite a few guys come from NCAA now and go in, on to the, the pro leagues. Yeah, the man. NHL. It's definitely more so nowadays. Yeah, it's, it's becoming more prevalent that NCAA guys are getting a sniff. Even after they finish their, like, you know, senior year, they're getting yeah. called up for the final push there. So I mean, A lot of guys cool. are going pro or D3. Yeah, like, you know, even. two or three of my guy, my friends, when I graduated, went and played in the, the SP for a few games. Mm -hmm. A couple of guys got a sniff in the coast. And it was, I mean, there's opportunity even from the D3 level. So it's, it's pretty cool. Definitely. I wanted to talk to you about Yarmouth when you yeah, played there. Um, absolutely. I hear incredible things coming out of there. I, like, obviously, I think Woodstock was the top 
team in that junior a league that we played in but yarmouth is up there when i hear to uh when it's talked about like getting treated well skate sticks jerseys socks all that good stuff i heard yarmouth was an incredible organization to play for could you attest to that maybe give the listeners an insight to that organization yeah absolutely yarmouth is another place that you get treated uh, you know best kind you, you everything that you could ever ask for you know sticks like you said the fan base too the fan base is amazing that's the, that was honestly probably the coolest part for me when i was there was how much following maybe even more than plymouth like yeah. the town the people that live in yarmouth they love the mariners man they that's all they, yeah. they there's not a whole lot going on down there so they literally live for the games man it's on they, fish in season two right so yeah well i guess so but they literally just eat it up so when you're down there you get treated pretty good and we had a cool team bus and we were fortunate enough to be really good that year so we were you know we won our division and we went to the finals against woodstock and stuff so it was you know it was uh i can i only was there for a year but it was probably one of the more fun years of hockey that i ever played for i remember sure. playing against you and i had fun like yeah. in yarmouth the rink was, like, was pretty was cool the packed. atmosphere is yeah. amazing the fish tank Remember, and then you get the people that bang the pucks are on your side then so it's not as yeah, crazy I hated, oh, them. I hated, hated the them when I played against yeah, them but right when I started playing for Yarmouth it was pretty decent I didn't hate them as much so um, we got to play for Jimbo do you, Did you? Any, do you have I any hilarious Jimbo memories I told them the, the what are you here to make the pizza story oh, man. <laughs> when what? I was on Tell that, what's that the pizza oh that's you heard that story in, in Woodstock when Jimbo was chirping the trainer about we got slaughtered we got like, smoked again I feel like every story I'm telling we're getting smoked <laughs> <in the game. laughs> that's where all the best stories come from <laughs> anyways uh, we were getting smoked actually we got smoked it was the end of the game and it was me dudes and maybe a couple other guys on the bench and the poor trainers like picking up the team bottles like just packing up for the boys and jimbo looks over at him like the guy's like visibly italian like the guys you know he's probably from italy he looks and he goes hey luigi like calls him straight up luigi goes are you here to make the pizzas for us and me and dudes are like oh my god did he literally just say that's the most ruthless chirp i've ever heard i wouldn't even i like literally that. skated away from the bench as fast as i could and but that's my that's the the, the woodstock jimbo. story but yeah he was pretty ruthless on the bench i heard some people called tomato face and pencil neck and all, all kinds, kinds of, of shit man. he was the first ever coach to chirp me like coaches oh, usually sure. don't chirp players what i got chirped that? by your coach too which is funny enough a few times really say that again i said i said he's get chirped by your coach a few times really who yeah by uh, troy oh yeah, oh, yeah. Pff, oh, i don't know if it was so much chirp in the but league like, fuck you wiggy like yeah, yeah. Jesus. he didn't like me very much i don't think well no you don't like the other team's best player well, there you go. <laughs> that. I don't know if that's the best player, but I remember Jimbo yelling players. at me, just being like, "Blanche, the game plan is to take your fucking head off." Oh, that's awesome. like, all right, that sounds good. No, I'm not surprised at all. That's crazy. <laughs> he used to call me Wiggy all the time. Like he would get a, in our first year, he would. He never yeah, knew yeah, our name. He called me Duty all the time too. We just we were basically interchangeable. Corey and Trevor yeah. is what yeah. the boys called us. Yeah. How'd you like that pink bus in Bridgewater? <laughs> <laughs> that thing sucks. I love bringing man. it up. That I thing know. sucks, but I good memories, it. though. Like, yeah. it was always a good laugh. Like, the boys were like, man, why do we have to ride in this thing? But I was fortunate enough that I never had to stand like duty. I, was, I, don't, uh, I, I still don't get seat. that. Did you, le- you have to stand well, on like, a bus? Well, there was only like probably 24 seats or 25 seats so there was 20 guys on the team a couple guys scratch and staffs and trainers and duty was the guy that you know would just be like fuck it i'll stand here like i was also i think i was more like i was kind of like a just a prick you know like yeah he was kind of the no one else wanted to do it so i was gonna send a message i I was gonna send a message and fucking do it you know what i mean like you guys can't do this watch it's easy of course it was easy for me because when you stand for two hours on the bus and then you go play four minutes a game like you're not really that affected you know so i, I didn't so. want like any of the good boys to be standing that's for damn sure yeah, you got you guys stood out with that bus though we knew when you were there no yeah there's no like, did we ever take that like other than bridgewater we didn't have to take that to anybody else's barn did we I don't think so. I remember Pisano's bag fell out that time. And oh, my God, yeah. Wait, what on happened? the highway. What and happened? the cop picked it up. <laughs> Pisano. How, how did it fall off the bus? Because it's just... The so there's like a back door, right? Where the, the gear would be packed. And it wasn't even like meant to... wasn't used for like tra- or transporting it anything. It was like a... Yeah, it was just like a, almost like a bathroom or something. So <laughs> we'd pile all our bags in this like back part of the bus and had like this like hinge door on it. And I guess at some point when we were driving home, the uh, the door popped open and Pisano's bag <laughs> fell out. So we get back to the forum and no word, no sight of Pisano's bag. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, still no word. Next day, like Jimbo calls... Pisano was like, hey, uh, we found your gear. Like, the, the cop picked it up on the side of the highway. Like, <laughs> Exit four. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere on the 118 or whatever that highway is. So stupid, man. That's rough. Did you guys get paid at all in Bridgewater? Like, 
30 bucks every week or anything like that. It's against NCAA violation. If I oh, my fuck. Fuck. No. <laughs> oh, that's another thing. That's you guys a, don't even get paid in NCAA. Yeah, dude, I made loot. If you play any water. sport or any like game where you get paid, then you're not supposed to play. So you, you even on the side, you couldn't get 20 bucks for dinner. Nothing like you're on a road trip. You're not supposed to, no. You're not supposed to get any type of, you know, professional oh, benefits. Yeah, paid. Yeah, was, so I never, never got, got paid. paid. Yeah. If you feel yeah. watching, I never got paid. Absolutely. Mm, well, that's very professional and very uh, blue collar of the NCAA. Not, yeah. No paying. Yeah, so you can't have any, like... Is 20 bucks a week considered pay? I know. Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, like that's allowance. basically what it was, right? So... Yeah. I mean... The studs make more, obviously. Or they don't. They should make more, but they don't, right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't get paid more in Yarmouth. When I was you there, you did. I didn't. Didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, that's not what it's all about. You know, it certainly helps. I'm trying to think. That place uh, was awesome. Yarmouth was a. You guys had like 15 time, different yeah. logo changes and rink changes and. Who us? Yeah, yeah you, you were guys like three different teams. Oh, yeah. Fucking this you. and that. You were the shipbuilders yeah. and the marauders and the. Did you say the shipbuilders? <laughs> the shipbuilders. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny. No, I was there the shit, the shipbuilding days. I was there for the lions and the marauders. I always hated playing you guys though. I loved it because I actually got to play. <laughs> so you guys were junk. Yeah. Well, you guys weren't we always had, junk. No, there. I was just kidding. There was good, always a good but. game, and I always hated playing against Jordan Thomas. What a fucking cocksucker! Yeah, fuck off, Tomsy. <laughs> He'll hear that. He's a beauty, though. Yeah. Great guy, but hated playing against Tom him. Dad. Yeah, old Tom Dad. <laughs> yeah, no, he, we yeah he was we always rough we, on me. We changed around a lot. No one could make their mind up. Yeah, we were around. I don't know how did you just like dip, change different sponsors and owners or what no? We the had the same owners. I think the owners just thought that just we trying to mix it up, eh? Because uh, we didn't, we, weren't, we weren't getting many fans at the forum, so I think they thought if we went over to Dartmouth, it would help, but obviously not. Uh, orange uh, T-shirt night. Orange T-shirt oh, yeah, night. Yeah, I every forgot night. you even switched sides of the bridge too. Yeah. Oh yeah, we went to the sports. Do you guys flag? remember when you made me walk across the bridge from Ocean Towers? To I don't one think of those we games? made you. It was probably one of those scenarios like the bus. Yeah, I feel like to you go just like we're parked and we're wigging nose each other car, so obviously we just took one. We're literally going across the bridge we we're in our suits and so i can't remember what happened we you got in an argument or something a long time you're gonna make us late and i think we just didn't we just we were like walked in and i was like fuck you i will and then to i ended the game. up yeah, yeah so and i walked ended up across walking the across the bridge to the game and i got there and jimbo scratched me <laughs> <laughs> imagine. imagine first imagine of all i wore a suit <laughs> You wore a suit and walked across the bridge. It was warm. I think it was early in the season, too. It was probably like September, October. I don't care if it's middle August. Up on top of the bridge, it ain't warm. <laughs> no shoes. <laughs> Jackets flying open, hairs everywhere. You're pissed off. I was thinking warm would be worse, like sweating your ass off, you know? Like the time we drove in with no windows. I didn't mind playing in that rink. It just sucked we had no fans. That place was brutal. It was like yeah. skating in mud. Where? Yeah. The sportsplex? Yes. And then... I didn't mind it. Really? Yeah, I guess you I, probably I, got used to it playing there every day. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, man. How much faster do you feel? Than like play. anywhere else yeah what do you mean i well, felt like i was like going in slow motion oh because you didn't like the ice you thought yeah. the ice was it shit. almost felt like they were just about to take the ice out every time we played you hear the like custodian sweeping garbage up here on the top track there it's so quiet and yeah there. i guess so roll, <laughs> before they you know what they do there every weekend they have like one of those shows where they try to sell shit those uh showcases for like christmas ornaments and like they have one every weekend there yeah so there'll, there'll always be that plexiglass on top yeah, so some days it was shit but i guess you just get some used days. to that you get used to it playing there two years in a row yeah, I mean, like you said, you probably would get used to it, but I hated playing there. Me too. As a, as a, my well, opponent. I yeah. All right. Um, I covered everything I wanted to talk about. Or do you have anything else you want to say? Talk about? Bring up? Just listen, man, I can talk for five hours if you want me to. You got anything to plug? You want to say hi to your parents? You want to do anything? I'll say hi to the parents. Always, you know, love your mom, love your dad. I can raise. Me too. Not, D- then, then D- they listen. Doug and Bond. Love yeah, you guys. Uh, if they listen, yeah, go ahead. Hopefully they do. Uh, yeah, they, he better hope he does. I'll put it on his radio when I get home. There you go. Like, Your dad taught me how to juggle last weekend. Did he? Yeah. Are you good at it now? No. But I got a couple spins in. Nice. Three bean bags. Nice. I almost had it. I'm practicing <laughs> though. He taught me the rhythm. Well, yeah, it feels hard, much more country. He tried to teach me a few times, but I, just, I don't got it. I don't got the talent. He had the guitar out and everything, singing. He had Warren's talented going. guy. You're another dead. talent I don't got. I wish. I <laughs> yeah, ain't that the truth? Fuck. You don't even have rhythm. No, I got nothing. I can't even dance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you're good at hockey, so that's good. And golf. I'm good. That's, at golf. that's what you're doing right now, right? So what, maybe. What, what course are you at? I'm at uh, Links of Penn Hills out in Shubenacadie. There. I'd love to get over. You're golf. You the golf pro or assistant? So I'm working to be the assistant there. Nice. Yeah. So that's, a pro. that's why he shut down beer league hockey focus on golf right another yeah, thing he go. just took a leap in that's right prick all right 
Well, Wig, thanks for coming out. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Having me, man. Some great stories. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, everyone that's listening, I appreciate the support. If you could go to all of our social media outlets: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, uh, SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Actually, I got the announcement today. They're the email today that we're going to be on Spotify next month because our download guys. numbers are up now. So we're going to be on Spotify oh, very yeah, soon. Cha ching. Uh, um, so be on the outlook for that. I'll let you know when we are officially on Spotify, but be on the look for that. Once again, thank you very much. I love you yeah, guys. Thanks for having us. We're out. Never give up.